before you can be dedicated, before you can be disciplined, you have got to have a mental and a spiritual commitment to that goal. Do you realize that the word disciple is taken from the word discipline? You say, don't be so hard about discipline. We're living in a free generation where anybody can be what they want to be and do what they want to do. My Bible teaches me God does not change. Amen. Amen. That's right. Thank God he brings change in our life, but you can count on the surety that he does not change. Amen. So if he's going to call you to make disciples of men or women, You've got to understand, you've got to be a disciplined individual. It doesn't happen overnight. And it doesn't happen just because you pray. Hallelujah. Because God has equipped you. God has uh, trained you. God has given you the ability to do the work. You've still got to go out and do the work. To see it happen. But before all of these things, determination, dedication, and discipline, you've got to have a mental commitment to the goal that you're seeking after. You've got to be committed spiritually to that goal. But you must also allow your attitude. You've got to allow your mind to be able to think positively about the way of being able to attain that goal. Your attitude, a positive attitude, will enable you to break through to new and higher grounds. It will position you in the place where God wants you to be. But a negative attitude will make you rot. Amen. Will make you deteriorate yes. in your own spirit. Yes. And you could become bitter and hurt so much and be disappointed in others. Yes. Talking about disappointment, you know, it's not really going to get better. You think that, you know, if, if you've been able to treat somebody with the kindness that you expect them to treat you with, and you may be able to restore your friendship. There will always be somebody else that sometimes God will choose to put in your life to be able to hone you. You know what honing is when you take a knife to sharpen it? Yeah. That's honing. Oh, yeah. Sometimes God wants you to sharpen your knife. Sometimes God wants you to be prepared and ready to accomplish those things that you would never have the ability to do without him but it's all up here as well being able to say God these are the things that I want to see hallelujah I want to be able to reach my parents for the sake of the gospel I want to be able to love my husband in such a way that he will be able to return that love to me hallelujah that I will be kind and merciful to my neighbor and then sometimes God brings somebody along and they will put a and help you to realize among the rose bushes there are thorns. But thank God for the thorns. They're there for a purpose. For what I don't know, but they're there for a purpose. Bless God. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 19. For as in water, face answers to face. What does that mean? Face answers to face. If you want to see it in black and white, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 19. Somebody read it aloud. 27, verse 19. Do you have it, Brother Joni? As is water, face. Answer to face. Face answers to face. So the heart of man to man. For as in water, face answers to face. What does it mean? Here's the mirror. Now you Bible school graduates, you stay out of this. <laughs> What is water? You look at water. What do you see? Reflection. So as face answers.
touches the face in water, so your heart is reflected by what you believe. The mind of man reflects the man. The, the heart of man reflects the man. See, Joshua was encouraged to be positive. God said, I'm going to fill you with courage. So get ready for the challenges. But in order for the Israelite army to be ready for the challenges physically, they needed to be ready mentally as well as spiritually. See, there may be tasks that only you can do. That only you can accomplish. But you have got to prepare your heart. Prepare your mind to be able to do those, those works that God has called you to do. I like what it says in Joshua chapter 1. In verse 1 it says, After the death of Moses, the Lord said to Joshua, who was the aide, of course, the lieutenant, if you will, of Moses, God told Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the river Jordan into the land I am about to give to them, the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great Euphrates River all the way to the Great Sea, which is today, of course, the Mediterranean, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. Amen. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, hallelujah. Be strong, he said. Be courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong. Be courageous. Be careful. Listen to this. He said, be strong. Be courageous. And then he said, be careful to obey all the law that my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. That you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. You meditate on it day and night. And that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then. Everybody say then. Then. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You see the mentality. You see the preparation of his heart. You see the preparation of the people. Before they could ever do the physical work, they had to have their hearts right. They had to have their hearts pure. They had to be given instruction from God Almighty Himself. You can change your condition too. If you can break all your mental barriers that you have built up inside of you. See, the negative mind concentrates. The negative mind only sees your own weakness, your own lack of education, your own previous mistakes, your own present circumstances, your negative mind will only see your own fear. Take the shackles off. Let the trains drop. Understand there is power in the Almighty God. There is power in His name. But there are some things that only you can accomplish for yourself. You have got to understand that your negative mind will make you continue to be that small individual and you will never amount to anything. But yet when you are able to allow an attitude adjustment to come your way, 
you will be able to see how great things you are able to accomplish in the name of the Lord. You will be able to see yourself breaking new ground. You will be able to see yourself marching around Jericho because you know that that's the promise the Lord gave you. And no matter how much you have to march, no matter how many miles you have to trod, you're going to obey. You're going to trust the Lord. But you are also going to do your own part. You need to break yourself loose from negative mentality. And when you break forth, hallelujah, you will begin to experience new experiences richly rewarding for you. You need to break loose from your negative mentality and you will shine like God meant for you to shine. You've got to take off the limits. Turn to your neighbor and say to them, take off the limits. Take off the limits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Jesus. You need to see with the eyes of God. You need to see yourself being able to rise up. You need to see yourself. 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 You need to see you to become. Fill your mind with positive words. Take the word of God. Pray those prayers in the book of Psalm. Apply it to your own life. And accept what the Bible says for you. Believe you are who God says you are. Amen. We attended a funeral Wednesday night. A precious saint of God. She also was 90 years old. Her daughter stood up to give the eulogy. Things I had never thought of. Her daughter was actually baptized in Greece. Came home to Hong Kong. Won her family to the Lord. But you know, you don't really fully comprehend a previous generation I learned in history that Hong Kong was taken December 25, 1941 by the Japanese army. She was born in Shanghai because of the war, because of atrocities by a very corrupt government. She had to go to work at the age of 11 years old. Try to help some supplement the family income. Her husband, who at the time was just a friend, came to Hong Kong. She later followed him at the age of 18. She lived through World War II. And though it was not mentioned, knowing the history of what took place during the Japanese occupation, I thought, I've been in the same room with this precious saint of God, but I never took the time to really find out who she is and what she had been through and the life experiences that were hers. Now for some who've been through the atrocities of war, you would think that the bitterness would be so difficult to deal with. But this precious saint of God, whose lifeless body lay before us, and as her daughter was giving the eulogy, again thinking about the life that she had lived and all that she had been through, but yet in my mind, all I could see was in her the latter years of her life, being able to smile and brighten up a room. She was not a speaker. She was not one that was outgoing and, and in her feeble state was difficult for her to get around. But anytime we would visit the church in Chingyi, she and her husband, who could hardly move, 
they, they always provide Bibles for all the chairs and they have those pouches or whatever they're called in the back seat and be able to pick out the Bibles. All of the Bibles would be taken and stacked in the corner. The, the uh, covers would be taken off the chairs and they would just go about doing their ministry of helping the church. Not complaining about the aches and the pains and the bones that were turning weak, but just doing something for the Lord, something they could contribute to, but always with a smile. She was never one, when I walked into the room, she would never just shake my hand. She would take my hand in both of her hands and would just embrace. And I thought Wednesday night, you could have told me all about your bitterness all about the pills that you had to suffer with. All about the sorrow of having to go to work at a very young age just to supplement your family. My wife and I talked later. We said, man, this generation, these kids that are sitting here today would be the ones having to go to work at their age. Carl, age 11, what would it be like to send him off to work? We've got it so good. And yet it seems that this generation wants to complain the most. Yes, amen. That's right. Talk to the generation previous of what it was like before there were OFWs. How did the Philippines survive? Or how did they survive today? Can you imagine if there was a recall of all the Filipinas in the world you're to go home? Can you imagine the total chaos? Yes. That should be something the Kino uses. You don't help us. We'll be this is the what house. we will do. We'll bring our ladies home. <laughs> we'll watch your economy suffer. Let's stop, man, let me get out of that. That's not necessary. <laughs> don't preach politics in the pulpit. <laughs> Bless God. Amen. <laughs> But you have got to be that individual that you know, no matter what I've been through, no matter what the future may hold, I stand before the Lord today asking God, help me adjust my attitude, help me adjust my faith, help me understand that you desire for me that greater things are to be. Hallelujah. When you meet with every obstacle, never believe that you have come to a dead end. Always believe that you will get out of every tight corner that you have found yourself in with the help of the Lord. Do not limit yourself anymore through negative thinking. Begin to focus on God. Focus on His promises and not on the circumstances that you find yourself in. There is no condition Hallelujah. that is permanent. Let me say it again. There is no condition that is permanent. Amen. Remind yourself, this too shall pass. Amen. Every storm that you Hallelujah. find yourself in, God will see you through. Amen. Every night season, there will come the day. You can be successful. You can be great in the kingdom of God. You have just got to believe that you can change your adverse circumstances to something more exciting in your life. You have got to mentally think. You have got to spiritually believe that you can be anything that you want to be. You can change anything that you do not want in your life anymore. Hallelujah. Do not limit God. Turn to your neighbor and say to them, Do not limit God. Do not limit God. Limit God. No, I won't. <laughs> everything I've already said, everything I've already preached, has just been the introduction. Let's now, now get back into the Word. Remember what was read in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? 
There are four assurances that you can have about the integrity of God. Number one, he cannot lie like a man. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things, now these two things were his promise and his oath to Abraham to keep that promise. Both are unchangeable. Both are immutable. They will not change. God cannot lie. We who have fled for refuge. Oh, I'm sorry, let me get back. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into that within the veil. Now we do find, here I'm telling you, take off the limits off of God. Here I just read in Hebrews chapter 6, that says God does have limits. There are boundaries that confine himself to his own word. He cannot lie. This does not change. We have the promise given first to Abraham. That will not change. But the second thing that gives us an assurance of God's integrity, he cannot repent like a man. He doesn't get under pressure. He does not see individuals doing the same thing and say to one, I'll forgive you. And over here, say, I will not forgive you. He is equal. Bless God. He is equal. He does not change his promises under pressure even when it's more convenient. You see, the repenting which God cannot do is that of changing his mind concerning the promises that he's made to the righteous. And that's the reason why we find it so oh hard sometimes that when someone who has walked in the truth and then all of a sudden they've gone a different direction and they still, still seem to be blessed even though they have walked away from God, but it's because God had given them a gift. And God is not going to take that gift back. And that's the reason why we can still see them laying hands upon the sick. Even though they have not walked with the Lord for many, 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 many years. God is the judge. And God will take care of that individual. Yes. Amen. He cannot repent concerning the things about changing his mind, concerning his promises made to the righteous. He will not and cannot fail to meet his obligations to them. He cannot say no to one and yes to another. He is not partial in his dealings with men. He treats all of us equally. Yes. Number three, third assurance of God's integrity. What he says, he will do. Amen. He will fulfill his obligations and all of his covenant promises, whether to bless or to curse. He is as zealous.